hey guys welcome back to my channel thanks for watching thanks for subscribing we are here with the final day day five of our tea boutique series um housekeeping here is the um supplies that i use throughout the week um if you want to see each item on its page of a catalog um, please refer to video number one day one um which was monday the 19th so you can see everything here i have it listed down in the description box you can reach out contact me whatever you need i am here to help so real quickly here's the stamp set in the tea boutique and the um what you call them? the dies i'm also going to use some of this ribbon um this is a stampin up ribbon um we got this when we did creativity um so it's just the linen um ribbon in um petal pink all right so i watched a french demonstrator and she made the most absolute cutest look at this tea bag but wait look at that you can put your tea in there write you a little message how sweet is that um this one i use the um oh my gosh black and white checker ribbon um it says it's time for tea i use my tiny stapler i use the oh you know what i did not add that on there so there is one more item that I used on this one that I did not write down and that is the um, double heart punch. Let me make sure that that is still a current thing. Okay, it is called the heart punch pack. Okay, so, so cute. Now here is the name of the uh, French Stampin' Up! demonstrator who um, made this. I don't know if she created it or somebody else did. Um, I, I don't speak French and I couldn't translate the video and so um, I don't know but this is what she did um, here are the measurements I have but I had to take the measurements from centimeters to inches and of course it wasn't a direct um, conversion and so I made it work for our size paper because the European um, cardstock is eight and a quarter by 11 and three quarters or something like that and so their paper is um, longer and um, skinnier than ours okay so I wanted this to fit on one of our you know American size eight and a half by 11 so this is what you need you need a piece of cardstock that is three by 11 and on the long side, we are going to score it at, as you can see there, one and a half. So one and a half, five and a half, five and a half, six, six, and six and a half six and a half okay so what now what you need to do is rotate the paper so your score mark here is on the top so you see how you have the three score marks those are going to go on the bottom and your um, piece with that score mark on top is going to go on top of your scoreboard and you're just going to make a tiny little tick mark at one and a half so you're not going to go all the way down you're just going to make a little more. you can use a pencil you can use your score tool it doesn't matter but you just need a little tick mark up there oh gosh okay so now what we need to do is make our top here so this piece here so it's easier to see on the white this is where we're at so you see our little tick mark what we're going to do is just score our pieces in like a triangle okay so how i felt comfortable doing it was i took my paper trimmer 
and I just lined up my tick mark with that bottom score mark and I scored. Make sure that's all the way in there. That's how I did it. You can get a, a ruler and your scoring tool. It, it doesn't matter. And score it that way as well. It, it doesn't matter. Now you have your two little triangle pieces and we're just going to fold those in like so. It's okay if it hangs over just slightly and it's also okay if there's a gap. So this piece hangs over ever so slightly. If that bothers you, you can always just cut off a little tiny bit of it. It, it doesn't bother me. It's just ever so slightly off. But if it bothers you, you can just take your your scissors and you can even it out. I don't know. I'm not going to do that because it doesn't bother me. Okay, so now we have our triangle and we're going to go ahead and just varnish it. Okay. Now we need to go ahead and have a nice crease to make our little fold over. Okay. So you're going to put it in your trimmer and you're going to put it wherever you want. And I think this one is three quarters of an inch. It doesn't really matter. Just however you want your fold. You can freehand it if you want. Just fold it. Uh, for me, it was just easier to use my paper trimmer. So I lined my point up with the... Um, three quarters of an inch and I scored it because this cardstock is super strong right and then you're just gonna fold down and you're going to use your stapler um, just whatever stapler you have you can use your common stapler if you have a small one use that but I'm not gonna staple it just yet because I want to staple in my ribbon so this one I did two staples. I stapled it first and then I stapled in my ribbon. It, it doesn't matter. You can do one staple, two staples, 15 staples if you want. So that's your choice. Now you see you have three score marks here. The middle one is going to be a mountain and the other two are going to be a valley. Okay. So if you mountain that middle one, the other ones will automatically valley. So it looks like a W. Okay. Now, as you can see here, mine's crooked, so I'm just going to rescore that to make sure it's not crooked. Okay. That was a folding error. All right. Now you're going to flip it over so you can see that your tabs are over. You're just going to cut them with your scissors, or you can draw a pencil mark and cut the pencil mark, or just go for it. Alright, so you're essentially done. So it should just fit inside the top nicely like so. Where's the white one? So it's just going to fit in there like that. That's just what your original staple is going to look like if you do one staple. Um, see, I did do two. I did that staple first, and then I stapled the um, bow in kind of a loop-de-loop -loop because I did everything else in a loop-de-loop, -loop, so I thought it would be really cute to loop-de-loop -loop that. And then just make sure it tucks in. Okay. Like so. All right, so now what we need to do is go ahead and decorate. And so you want to make sure you keep your orientation Correct. So this is the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate my insides. Now I just used scrap. Obviously it's a different color paper. I just used any piece of scrap that you have that'll fit this. Um, so I cut it at four by whatever that measurement is. So let me find a scrap here. Um, 
course, my scrap bag has walked away a little bit. You can do the same color. Whatever scrap you have. I'm going to do... I thought I had a ton of cherry cobbler scraps, but I don't. So I do have a ton of crush curry long strips of scraps. So I'm going to use that. And this is roughly a half an inch, maybe three quarters, yeah, three quarters of an inch by four. Actually, I'm going to make it three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths by um, three quarters of an inch. Like I said, it's, it's your belly band. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want. Um, what I'm going to do is score it at a half an inch on both sides on the long side just so you have something that looks like that okay you're going to fold those over and you're going to place it wherever you want in the center-ish I didn't back where the tea goes um, I felt it wasn't necessary so just make sure that your tea fits in there snugly not too tight, but not too loose. And you're gonna go ahead and glue that down. We might as well. Or use your adhesive of choice. Um, strong adhesion. Not your average tape runner. Okay. There's that. All right, so I'm gonna continue working down and I cut my panels already, I think. I didn't cut my white panel. Oh man, look, I was so ready. I already had a piece already cut. Okay, I'm gonna use that piece. I didn't really like the crushed curry on top of it. Okay, so this piece is too long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's okay. If your piece is too long, just give it a second, let that glue dry, and just slice off a little sliver and rescore it. We work, we craft easy. And actually, I, I don't care if I get glue on my scoreboard, to be honest. I don't care. And then just rescore it at a half an inch. So this one is three and seven eighths by one because that's the scrap that I had prepped for this project. And as you can see, I'm not concerned about that because guess what? We're just going to cover right on over that. Yes, I'm going to keep this blooper in here because I want you to see that, you know, it's not all rainbows and gumdrops when you're crafting. Sometimes you mess up and then you start over or you change your mind, you know? All right, so we need to go ahead and cut our panel, which I completely forgot about. Um, so we need a piece of white that is gonna measure two and seven eighths by four and three eighths. So the measurement is four and a half. So I'm just gonna do one tick mark before, which is four and three eighths. So I have my white right here. So two and seven eighths by four and three eighths. What I'm going to do is go ahead and lay this, my white page, on top of my cardstock. And I'm going to kind of center it and I'm going to cut these pieces off. So I put it all the way at the top. And now I'm just cutting it. So that way, when I move it back down, it's a perfect match. 
See what I did there? Perfect match. Craft easy. All right, so we're gonna glue this on with my 9,000 pounds of glue, which I probably don't need, but makes me feel better. I'm gonna center this piece like so. And we're gonna give that a second to dry before we stamp on it, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take my tea bag out, and now we're gonna work on the outsides. It's fine to make your fold go flat. It, it doesn't matter. So here are my two pieces. So I have the front and the back covered. You don't have to do the back. Um, it just it works out with the paper. Um, if you cut it a certain way, it'll do it again. Because again, this is two and seven eighths by four and three eighths. So you can get the two pieces out of a six by six. Um, again, I'm going to line it up and I'm going to cut the corners off. You can use the um, trio punch for that corner, but to be honest, I forgot about it until just now. But that is okay. All right, and we're going to line this up. Center it and good to go. Okay. Same thing with our back, same measurements two and seven eighths by four and three eighths. And we're going to go ahead and this one I did angle the edges, but I don't think I want to right now. I think I'm just going to. Um, mm, I kind of want to cover up that score line. So yeah, I am going to angle it. So this is going to have that little piece showing, which is fine. You can either have that little piece showing or you can just mat it on here, which I'll do that just to show you. Um, so this measurement would be... three and seven eighths. I'll show you how they look. If you want to mat it all the way up or a little bit up. If you want to angle it or leave it rectangle like so. So here are your two versions, right? If you want it like this, again, you're just going to line it up to wherever you want that score line to be or the angles to be, you're going to flip it over and cut those off. But for this one, we're just going to mat it up to that score line. And that is it. Okay. So like that. Easy. All right, so now we need to go ahead and stamp our insides and um, decorate the outside. All right, so let me think. You're gonna pick whatever stamp set you, or whatever stamp set, whatever stamp you would like. I'm just gonna do the same, take care of yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I did that on the front too. Let me see. Oh, I didn't stamp the heart. Right, so that says take care of yourself. I'm gonna do mine in cherry cobbler ink. Of course, that's the one all the way on the bottom. And I'm gonna do some, I don't know, maybe some crushed curry. I don't know yet. All right, so take care of yourself, ready to go. And you could put this all in your Stamparatus and do the whole, you know, do everything at once if you want. Um, actually, because, let me show you something. All right, so with the Stamparatus, you get one, 
two plates. So we probably should have stamped this before I uh, glued it down, but I forgot to um, about the Stamparatus. And so what you can do is line your paper up wherever you want it. So you're just going to put it there. And you're going to line your stamp set up. Both stamps at the same time. Um, which I think I lost my other stamp. Okay, it was stuck to the bottom of the Stamparatus. So what you would do is line up your stamp set where you want it. And this one's going to be a little bit awkward because um, I forgot about it. And then what you're going to do is take your other stamp. So say I wanted a leaf and a flower just for demonstration purposes. Um, you can add them on to wherever you think they are going to be great. And just, you know, take this one and measure it out. Just those few extra seconds, right? And now we're going to take our other plate and come down and swipe those stamps, right? So now you can stamp all of your um, one stamp. Boom, boom, boom. Stamp all those out. Come back ink these boom 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 so that way you're just pop you know pop, pop, or whichever one you want so that's what i love about this the um stamparatus that you can do multiple um stamps at a time and if you wanted to change like say you wanted to have um flowers going down you would line up the first one Say I wanted the flowers to go up the side, right? You'll line up that, pop that up, scooch it down, boom, next. Pop it up, scooch it down. So it's all the way to the top. So that was just a fun impromptu <laughs> tutorial, if you will, on the Stamparatus. So I probably shouldn't have did that because now these things are going to be hard to take apart. Now, the only thing is that you do have to take your plate completely off in order to close it or else you're going to bust it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to hand stamp these for right now because I am. All right, cherry cobbler, pop it open, tap, tap, tap. And we're going to... Down. And now we're going to use our little tiny little leaf. I think we're going to use the leaf. There it is. And I'm going to do that in Crush Curry. Tap, tap, tap. Tap it. Tap, tap, tap. Tap it. If I'm making a whole bunch of these, I'm definitely using the Stamparatus instead of hand stamping, but I'm only making the one, so I'm good. Okay, and we also need to stamp our heart, which is right here. So again, where's my little scratch paper? It's actually the grid paper that goes in the Stamparatus. It has centimeters on one side and it has inches on the other. So you can do it in both. Again, we're going to tap, tap, tap. And right in the middle as best as you can. Straight down, straight up. Kind of closer to the top because we're going to hide the bottom of that heart. You can always stamp first and then punch later. Um, because it's a polymer stamp, which it's, that means it's a see-through, um, I punch first and stamp second, but it is your comfortability. All right, so there's that. And 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is um, add some stripes to our teacup. This one I did um, the Memento Black, Tuxedo Black, because it matched the ribbon. This one I'm just gonna use my Versamark. Um, you can use your um, Cherry Cobbler ink pad, but I am just going to use my Versamark because if I mess up, it won't be as noticeable. So you could have done this um, part first, which I probably should have done it first, but that's okay. Here is where my Stamparatus is going to uh, be my best friend right now. So I'm going to pull that back out because I am. That is going to be my best friend because guess what? I can stick this here and I'm going to just kind of slightly just put it on this little edge. Okay. Well, that didn't work out, did it? All right, I'm going to have to measure it out because actually, you know what I can do? I'm going to take a piece of tape runner on the back, just a tiny, a tiny little smidge. And I'm going to tape it where I want it to go because I can't use the magnets because the stamp is the same exact size of the um, cut apart. So there you go. Use a little piece there. I'm going to take my Bursa Mark or my Cherry Cobbler or your Tuxedo Black, whatever you want. Tap, 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 tap. And we're going to get a perfect stamp over. Ta-da! Perfectly lined up. Thank you, Stamparatus. Yeah. It saves you when you have these afterthoughts when you're trying to do a tutorial and you decide to change up your original plan. Perfect. All right, so you make sure you clean that off really, really well. And we're going to go ahead and add our glue to our... Um, solid heart and we're going to glue it onto our scallop heart. Again, this is the bundle pack. So you get two punches that match perfectly. You get the solid heart and the scallop heart like so. And then you're just going to kind of play around with how you want it on your cup. And I actually like that. So because I have my little tape there, that worked out perfectly. Just add your little bit of glue. I'm going to tilt this one a little bit more than I did the other one. And I'm going to use my dimensionals, of course, a million of them. Okay, and I'm going to cut one in half for the handle. And I need one more for the bottom. I probably don't, but I want it. There you go. All right, opening it up. And because I have directional paper, it's easy to tell what is the top and what is the bottom. If you don't have directional paper here, then you need to make sure that, you know, what is my top, what is my bottom. Um, this is where another piece of ribbon would probably be super cute if you tied it. Let's go ahead and tie some ribbon on here. I think that would look cute. And I'm just going to go another afterthought. But that's the joy of crafting because it's never going to be the same. Right? This is your design. You're going to do what you want. And it's going to come out beautifully. And you can make them all different. They don't have to be the same. No one says they have to be the same. Okay, so I just want a little knot. I'm not going to try to fuss with a bow. 
Yeah, I like that. And then, of course, I didn't press it too hard. That's why my dimensionals came up really easy because I didn't press down on it. That up that way. I think that looks absolutely adorable. I'm going to put this in the middle here. I love it. Okay, so now we need to do our topper. So you want to go ahead and um, you want to measure out where your um, paper fits in. Okay, because you don't want to staple too close. You want to staple it to the top, as close to the top as you can. All right. Oh, I forgot about our little um, tag. All right, let's get the stamps back out. And you can use your stamp apparatus again. What did I use? It's tea time. So let's do this tea time again. And I'm just going to stamp it directly on there. You can, you know, cut out a little um, matting piece if you want, but I'm okay with it not having a matting piece. I stamp sideways. Um, I don't know why, but I do. It's, I score sideways as well. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, I'm just using the Memento Tuxedo, and I'm just going to stamp straight down, straight up. Of course, I have to give myself some room here. Line it up. And straight down and straight up. That's it. My niece's new saying is straight up. She was like, straight up, he was telling me, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's seven. Just turned seven. I was cracking up. And she was like, and I told him he better leave me alone straight up. <laughs> so I don't know where she heard it from, but it quite tickled me. All right, so I'm wiping off all my stamps because I didn't wipe off the other one. There we go. All right, I'm going to have to do two staples because I am. You can glue that top down, but I'm going to do two staples. So I'm going to staple this one as close to the top as I can. Um, making sure that I have enough room that I can tuck my paper in, my front flap. All right, I'm going to take my, oh, <laughs> that is all I have left. It is gone, gone. Okay, that's fine. That's all we need. I'm going to take my tag, and I think I'm just going to staple it. I'm going to do two little staples, like an X. I think that's really cute. And then I'm just going to kind of style this on here how I want. I'm just going to do a little, let's see. This one I did a little loop-de-loop. -loop. Actually, I think I used a glue dot to keep that as a cute little loop-de-loop. -loop. And so I may do that again if I can't get it to loop-de-loop. -loop. So I'm going to come up around here. And I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm going to staple it like that. Yeah, and I got really excited, didn't I? So I'm just going to staple it. I'm going to make an X on this one because um, I think an X looks cute right there. X marks the spot. Now I can add another glue dot if I want to kind of cover that or make another little loop-de-loop -loop over here, but I'm okay with it where it's at over here, just kind of chilling out to the side like so. I think it's really cute. But I will show you what I mean if you take your little mini glue dots and pokey tool. I'm going to stick this right about there and I'm going to stick this. There you go. So you have multiple little 
just a little extra visual. Obviously, you can just not do a tag or a bow. You know, you don't have to do any of that, especially if you're making a whole bunch of them. Um, it is a longer process, um, but we're done. So I love it. And now we're going to go ahead and put our tea back in there. Actually, you know what? I had a blue tea bag. I want the blue one in there. Mix and match your teas. There we go. And we're going to pop it in there. So we are done, guys. I absolutely love it. Look at how cute these are. They stand up on their own like so. Um, oh, what I also brought this little sliver of paper. When I was cutting off the paper, I had these little slivers. Um, the pattern pattern. You can always just do a faux bow or just add another strip of paper just to kind of take away some of the busyness. Um, you know, you can do any. How cute would that be, right? So if you just want to add an extra pizzazz, you can. Actually, I really, really like that. Um, you know, if you want, you don't have to. All right. This is our project, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.